What's up, Smoke? Hey, what's up, man? So what's it? You ready to do this review? What review? Review for Friday. Nah, I know, man. I think I'm going to kick it out here and smoke this joint. You sure? Today is Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go right ahead, man. Have fun. I'll be sure to check it out later. All right, dude. Have fun. and welcome to another reputized video. Friday came out back in 1995, was directed by F. Gary Gray, and stars Ice Cube, Chris Tucker, and John Witherspoon. It involves these two pot-smoking friends who gets tangled up in some crazy trouble over the course of the day in the mean streets of South Central LA in their neighborhood. This film was really excellent, guys. I really did enjoy this comedy. It was a comedy that most that now, nowadays we never get. Which is why you can definitely tell when you watch this film, you're watching a 90s film. Because most of the best comedies and horror and all of that came out around that time. Going in with the positive, folks. The great Chris Tucker. Oh my gosh. He's what made this movie. Think of Bugs Bunny on weed. That's how cartoonish and lively he was. He was there for the comedy. I believe that if you didn't have this character in this movie, it wouldn't be what it is today. Chris Tucker brought life to that role. He is what makes this movie, I think. Ice Cube, yes, he's good. This was Ice Cube's second movie, but I think Chris Tucker is what made this movie. He did a lot of his improvisations. He made up most of the lines. Like, most of the lines that he said in this film wasn't even scripted. That's how talented he was. Writer DJ Pooh, who also wrote with Ice Cube on this film, was considered for that role. Also, Chris Rock and Tommy Davidson was also considered for the role of Smokey, but the studio wanted to go with someone more known. And in came Chris Tucker. And I think at the time, Chris Tucker was actually on Def Comedy Jam. And he was kind of a big deal at that time. So, I think they made a good choice. Chris Tucker, you brought, you were the man, man. You were the man. I don't give a fuck. Very comedic. Very live-like. It's just something that we never get nowadays anymore. I don't know why. Damn! Ice Cube and DJ Pooh's storyline was just excellent. It was straight to the point, just about these two potheads that was just sitting out in front of the house and just looking at all the crazy things that went on. It's very tongue-in-cheek. This was a hood movie that wasn't trying to take itself seriously at all. It was like them trying to make fun of boys in the hood, at the, which was Ice Cube's first movie, which came out a couple of years prior to this. But at the same time, they did get serious later on. So they switch, they flip it on you. And that's another the unique thing about this movie. You, you don't hardly get that much comedies nowadays that flips it on you, it does a 180 on you, and just turns into something dramatic. You go from being really silly in like the first two acts, then the final act, serious. And that was genius. As I mentioned before, this was Cube's second film role. And he was just getting out of the group NWA, which he was a part of, along with Dr. Dre, Easy e DJ Yella, and Ren. This film started production, I think, a month after Easy e died. And it was a, an emotional time for Ice Cube. So I think him doing this movie pretty much got him back on track and feeling good about everything again because they had gone through a lot prior to this. So when Ice Cube started this film... I think it lightened his mood up a lot. But don't quote me on that. I don't know the full story of that. All I know is from what the Straight Outta Compton movie told me. I will do some research on that if I decide to do a review on Straight Outta Compton. The story in this had a moral message. I'm not going to try to get into it too deep, but there's a scene in there where Ice Cube's character father, John, played by John Witherspoon, which is also great in this film, was telling him on how to be a man. That whole scene was set up 
for the morality of this film and to, and wanted to let you know that this wasn't just a mindless comedy about pot smoking and sexual innuendos and all that. It also had a moral to it. I respected the direction of it because of that. Because what happens in that scene really does pay off in the final act. This film was shot in 20 days and you can't really tell because to me, I don't know about you guys, but to me the pacing was just perfect. There was the right amount of comedy, there was the right amount of dialogue, and the scenes was cut just perfectly. So yeah, the, the film was made in 20 days and a production budget of I think 3.9 million I think I read. But it made it made pretty good at the box office, so that's that's definitely a win. If I'm mistaken, you know, leave me a comment down below and let me know if I am. But I think this is the shortest production ever. When they went into production of this, they filmed for 20 days. I don't think no movie nowadays gets made for that short amount of time. I honestly don't. Now, like I said, please quote me on that because I'm not really sure, but I've done research and it seems like every movie that gets made now is like over a period of maybe 50 to 60 days, but this was filmed in 20 days. I never hear anything like that nowadays, not even with the modern comedies. Another interesting fact about this film was, and I know I'm giving out facts at the same time, but I like doing this. I think this is really interesting stuff, and I think it's just stuff that people don't really realize, and it makes you even enjoy the film even more if you know little, little stuff like this. The director, F. Gary Gray, actually grew up in the same filming locations that this movie take, put, took place in, in that same neighborhood. So I thought that was pretty interesting. There are a few characters in this, played by actors that are sadly no longer with us. Bernie Mac, he plays a pastor in this that visits Craig and Day Day on the porch. And then there's another one, uh, Michael Clark Duncan, who can be seen at a craps game in a flashback sequence at the beginning of this film. It took me a little bit to realize, whoa, that's Michael Clark Duncan. Green Mile, wow. All right, speaking of a Debo, played by Tony Zeus Lester Jr., I believe that's his full name, he was pretty good. Um, when he would show up, they would let you know that he's not a character to be messed with. You really don't want to mess with this guy, even though he is a bully. At the end, he pretty much gets proven wrong on that. Much respect, Ice Cube. The cinematography and the editing and lighting and direction, all of that was done really well. The score in this was done pretty well, although most of this movie was mostly had a soundtrack in it, which I really liked. As most of y'all already know, judging by my past YouTube videos, I am a rap fan. Of course, this was a 90s movie, so you got most of the old school rappers in there. Mac 10, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube. Unfortunately, you don't get Notorious, which is another 90s rapper I liked. But the soundtrack to this film was pretty good. Director F. Gary Gray has come a long way. Since him doing this, which was which this film Fr Friday was his first film. And since then, he's come a long way from doing hood like movies like this to doing here recently The Fate of the Furious. And I'm hearing he's coming out with the new Men in Black movie. That's a big change in MO of his direction. And it all started when he, he directed Straight Out of Compton, which was a big hit for Universal Pictures. And ever since then, he's had like these really big budgeted direction jobs. Like I said, The Fate of the Furious and now the upcoming Men in Black film. So I really respect this director. He's moving on up there, kind of like how James Wan is. All, right, all the characters was good in this, which one I wasn't really particularly fond of, and that moves me into the negatives. Craig's girlfriend, this sassy, prissy, bitchy kind of girl. She wasn't in it much, but I could not stand her. But other than that, then that's, that's about the only negative I have. Very positive vibes from this film, folks. I'm giving Friday an A. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, get reputized, share. What do you think of Friday? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me comment down below and let me know what you think. What better time to talk about a movie like this than on Friday? Stay tuned for my review for next Friday coming out next Friday. Peace the Ripper.